Okay, let's keep going. So the cartilage growth, you have the oppositional growth, and that's uh, grow from the from the surface, from the outside, and from the outside you're gonna grow in. And the second one is interstitial growth, and that's those uh, chondrocyte. So they are inside. They will do the mitosis. So they have two cartilage growths. So this show you these two. And let's look at the bone formation. You have two different kind of bone formation, intramembrane ossification and endochondral ossification. And first, let's start from the intramembrane ossification. This is the process to form the flat bone. So the flat bone, they start with a piece of paper, but that's the bone tissue. And they gradually make it thicker. So they have the ossification center, and they will make the blood vessel grow in. So inside, they form the bone structure and mainly the spongy bone. And a good example, skull. So the flat bone and they go through the intramembrane ossification. And they show you the, the skull structure. And most of the bone, they go through the endochondral ossification. So most of the body bone, they go through this. And the name tells you they will form the chondral cartilage. They will form the cartilage first. So endochondral ossification, that's the way most bones uh, synthesis, go through this process. So let's look at the picture. They will start from the cartilage first. And the cartilage inside part, they will become a primary ossification center. So the blood vessel grow in and they become the bone structure. Eventually you have those two ends. And these two ends, they will form the secondary ossification center. So you found inside they become bone. And gradually they replace those cartilage with bone until you have those two lines. They're called epiphyseal plate. So that's the cartilage. And eventually when all the cartilage being replaced by bone, and that's when they finish. So this process from here to here take about 18 years. And in the embryo first, they produce the cartilage. And when the embryo develops into a, a fetus, the inside part of the bone, the center part, they were going to form the first primary ossification center. So blood vessel grow in, they turn it into bone, and they start to form the secondary ossification center. So these long bones, they go through this process. And when the baby is born, that's the, 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 uh, the, how the bone look like. So you found those two ends, a lot of cartilage. And they will gradually replace those cartilage with bone. And in toddler, they have those two area with cartilage, we call the epiphyseal plate. And uh, the, the toddler grow into the adolescence, and this epiphyseal plate, they have less and less cartilage. They have more and more bones. So actually, they can use the x-ray and identify what percentage of cartilage they still have left. And they can actually predict uh, how long the, the bone can still grow. So eventually, when you turn into adult, there's no cartilage anymore. So all the epiphyseal plate been turned into epiphyseal line. So that's the epiphyseal line, epiphyseal line. And so you won't be able to grow taller. You can grow wider, but you cannot grow taller. And this is a very young bone. So based on what you learned, you found, oh, a lot of cartilage. So you know there's a very young bone structure. And there's another one, still a pretty young bone, because you see a lot of cartilage in the two ends. So they go through the endochondral ossification process. And this show you in the epiphyseal plate, that's where the bone grow. So let's look at how those cartilage gradually turn into bone. The process very similar to the skin grow. So in the skin, we have the uh, the base. You have five layers. Uh, start from the stratum geminativum, and the the older cells being pushed up. Very similar here, and the bone. They start from the the cartilage, but this time they will push to the center, push down. So you have five layers. The first layer is called the zone uh, resting cartilage. So they do nothing, but next to it the zone proliferation cartilage these are very active they do a lot of mitosis so they will produce new uh, 
new cartilage cells, they'll push them down and go to the zone 3, hypertrophic cartilage, and when they go to the zone 4, okay, so this is like skin, like the straightened uh, granulosin. These are the matured cells, so they are ready. They are ready to turn into bone. So the inside, like the skin cells, the water turned into keratin, and in the bone, this this uh, cartilage will turn into into the bone cells. And inside, they turn into the cal the calcified calcified cartilage. Will put more and more calcium. Eventually, when they go to the zone five, zone of ossification, and these are pretty much the bone. So the they put a lot of calcium inside. So very similar uh, to the to the skin growth process. And eventually they have less and less cartilage. So in adult bone they have epiphyseal line. So that's the epiphyseal line. That's the epiphyseal line. And when the bone grow, they can grow longer. They can also grow wider because the Compared with the baby's bone, the adult's bone need to support more weight, so they need to grow wider, and it's called a positional growth. So you grow wider, and you need osteoblast to put new bone matrix outside. You also need osteoclast to eat the inside away, so it can grow wider and wider. So this process you require two bones. So osteoblast put the bone matrix outside and osteoclast eat the bone matrix away so the bone can grow wider and wider and inside the cavity become wider as well and that's the video uh, you can you can look at how these two bone cells they work together for the additional bone growth and even though you don't uh, hurt your bone but every year is about 10% of your bone keep being modified so based on these two kind of cells osteoblast and osteoclast. This one eat the bone matrix away and this one put new bone matrix. And if you break your bone and after you heal your, your new bone is as good as the old one. The reason is uh, they put exactly the same bone matrix into the into the new bone. So so your your new bone is as good as the old one. So this show you the bone remodeling. You can take a look at this uh, YouTube video. Okay, let's look at the regulation of blood calcium. Uh, your bone, your bone is a big uh, container of the calcium. So osteoclasts play a big role. Also from your diet, uh, you eat calcium. And you also need UV because we talk about it in the skin. Skin produces vitamin D and vitamin D3 help the, the calcium absorption in your digestive system. and say your blood calcium level decrease what you can do so when your blood calcium level decrease you your body want to maintain the homeostasis of the calcium concentration so it turned out you want to increase your blood calcium level and it will work on the parathyroid hormone so that's your thyroid gland in the back of your thyroid gland you have four small dots these four parathyroid hormone and a uh, parathyroid gland they release parathyroid hormone and also in your kidney, your kidney can turn vitamin D into a hormone called calcitriol. Calcitriol and parathyroid hormone, their function, they will ask the bone release more bone matrix. How? Osteoclast. That's why eat bone matrix away. So they will ask the, the osteoclast work harder, release more bone matrix. And also it will ask the, the kidney because can, kidney will kind of excrete some ions into the urine. They will decrease the, the calcium excretion. And also in the small intestines, they will increase the calcium absorption. So all these three together, they increase the calcium level in your blood. So that's the process uh, when your blood calcium level decreases. So that's the calcintonin, parathyroid hormones, and when your blood calcium level increase, and they, they work on the calcintonin. So calcintonin its function is short term inhibit movement of bone calcium into blood. So after this, your blood calcium level is gonna decrease. And for the long term, inhibit osteoclast. Osteoclast can eat the bone matrix, they inhibit. So together, calcitonin, its function is to decrease the 
the blood calcium. So the their net result is blood calcium level decrease. So apparently this is gonna work when your blood calcium level is too high. So it turned out the, the blood calcium is part of the homeostasis, maintain the stable environment. If your blood calcium level is too high, you can decrease it. If your blood calcium level is too low, you can increase it. So eventually your blood calcium level is well maintained, homeostasis. And let's look at the hormone. They play a role to maintain the bone health. Your growth hormone play a role. And these two hormones we talk about, calcitonin and parathyroid hormone, they both play a role as well. And when the bone matrix uh, won't be able to maintain, they become the bone gonna become weaker and weaker because especially in the bone is 98% bone matrix. You only have 2% bone cell. And when they become weaker and weaker, your body weight uh, gonna push the bone and eventually they won't be able to support your body weight and there's osteoporosis. It happens more in female than male but it can happen in both gender and one reason is uh, the female sex hormone estrogen and can protect the bone but it can happen in both gender. So the treatment well calcium because the bone matrix is many calcium uh, vitamin D, well, we talk about the vitamin D's function, it helps the, the calcium. And exercise, this part can, as the osteo, osteocyte, increase the bone matrix strength. And some women can respond to the uh, female sex hormone replacement. Okay, that's it.